Hello, good day. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about this aircraft that I've built. Um, I've spent about a year or so on this on this project, and I took a bit of time um, before I decided to make a video about it. Basically, because I wasn't sure if the aircraft was actually going to fly, <laughs> and I didn't want to make a video about how to make an airplane, and the one I'm making actually doesn't fly. So as you can see. Uh, from the first clip, it did manage to get off the ground, um, which I was quite concerned about. Uh, of course, it did crash, and the main reason for that, I think, is because uh, I actually wasn't expecting it to fly. Um, the ailerons and elevators actually weren't connected up, and I was just doing some ground runs, and then the aircraft just went up in the air, and I got uh, wasn't really expecting it, so I pulled back on the throttle, and it just nosedived and crashed. But at least it gave me a bit of confidence to decide to go ahead and make these videos. So this will be the first in a series of videos where I'll be covering everything that I've done to design, build and test this aircraft. This first video will just be me talking about my goals for this project and how I define sort of high level requirements from those goals. And then we'll talk about how those goal, those goals and requirements together sort of translated into this design and, and, and why the aircraft looks the way that it does. So two, two points of caution here is that I'm not a mechanical engineer. I've never done stress analysis. So if that's what you're looking for out of these videos, I have not done any stress analysis really other than me trying to physically break the component and seeing if it breaks. If I can't break it, then aerodynamic loading probably wouldn't break it. Second thing is that this is the first time that I'm ever doing this. Um, never done this before, never made an aircraft before. So there's probably better ways to do it. Um, and if you you think I've done something wrong or uh, there's better ways I can do it, then feel free to leave a, um, a comment and uh, about it. So let's get into it, right? So I had five main goals for this project. Um, the first one is obviously I wanted to build an aircraft, <laughs> but I wanted to build an aircraft sort of from scratch basically and actually I wanted to make a VTOL aircraft from scratch that was the main the main goal on the outset of course I can I am fully aware that this is not a VTOL aircraft and we'll get we'll get to that um, but first I want to start off with what I mean by by building an aircraft from scratch so when I say I build an aircraft from scratch I don't mean you're going on GrabCAD or um, Thingiverse or something and getting a model online and you're 3d printing it and, and gluing it together what I mean is you are starting from a blank sheet of paper. Uh, you're actually hand drawing this aircraft how you want it to look like from your, your mind. And your, one of the things I then did was I took it into a CAD model, just roughed it up basically in uh, a CAD modeling software. I use Autodesk Fusion. And just to see what it kind of will generally look like or what I want it to look like and with these sort of dimensions that I have in mind. And you're then you're then taking the design from there. So you you are doing all the aerodynamic analysis. You well, the aerodynamic analysis and flight dynamics. You'll do some stability analysis. You'll be looking at sizing all your components. You'll have to do a lot of a lot more CG management, weight management. Um, you might even have to go into sizing your your servos and stuff. I don't get into sizing servos, but these are things that you will have to get into, obviously, because it's not all done for you. The second goal that I wanted to um, that I sort of set for myself is that I wanted something. I wanted something that was pretty fast. Uh, I wanted something faster than a quadcopter, but not as fast, not so fast that I can't actually physically control it with a typical RC controller from the ground, like this one. Like like this um, on the ground. Third goal is third goal is I wanted it to be big. I wanted something that was fairly substantial, you know, that I can use in like different different applications. Enemy precision airstrike, take cover. And the thing is, like, as you, I'm just kidding, but as you, as you get like a certain size, um, you'd find that it's not as easy to just 3D print everything and glue it all together. It comes becomes a little bit less practical, um, especially if you're designing like a V two aircraft, which was the original intent. So you'll find that my um, my actual um, airframe structure looks something like this inside of there, and which is a bit more in line with what you'd see on like a large, say, a large civil airliner or 
or most other typical aircraft that I want to make something big and massive and he's, he's pretty big he's pretty fat as well so fourth fourth goal was I wanted a bit of novelty in it which is why it's got this sort of canard configuration now I know a canard is not like wow Philly that's amazing how did you think of that but I, it just it just adds a bit of complexity to the to the project it took me a long time actually to stabilize this plane um, or to figure out how to select the airports to stabilize it so so it's a bit it's a, it added a bit of a complexity rather than just a typical um, main wing and horizontal tail, fin, tail plane uh, aircraft fifth thing was it shouldn't cost me too much I think I set a budget for like 600 pounds and I've basically spent about 650 pounds so far um, which is okay because I got two aircraft basically for for the price of 650 pounds so trying to figure out if that works out okay or not but I would, didn't want to have to like cut metal and buy a bunch of other tools other than what I had already and I had a 3 printer already I just need to like the lightweight filaments and stuff like that was fine but I didn't want to invest too much heavily in, in other tools that I didn't already have right so from there you're then now going to start to define our top level requirements so the first thing I actually did was I set a, a length I set a physical length of the size of the aircraft that I wanted I, and I set it at 600 millimeters. I said I didn't want anything bigger than that. Um, past, partly because I was building this thing in my apartment and I obviously can't have an aircraft that you know half the size of this couch or something like you know twice the size of this couch. It's already half the size of the couch actually. I think at this point it's important to recognize the reasons as to why you're defining these these lengths early. I'm not saying that if during the course of the design the aircraft went a little bit bigger, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind too much. And in fact, when I was doing the aerodynamic analysis, I did I did shift around the size of the plane a little bit, but not not much. I think maybe about by about 50 millimeters or so. But it's good for you to to sort of define these constraints earlier on in your project. Um, just to get an idea of it so that because what can happen is you can end up with what I call a design loop where where you have so many parameters that you have you can play with and some of them feed into each other so for, so for example you can if you wanted if you wanted to decide how much thrust you need you needed you then have to figure out okay well what 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 is my how much weight do I have and then if you don't define roughly what your weight is you can say you'll say well my weight sort of depends on how long I want to fly for or how big my battery is and then you'll be like okay well how big is your does your battery need to be and then you'll be like well it depends on what kind of engines I have and then you'll be like oh well what kind of engines do you need and you'll be like well it depends on how much thrust I need so you can you can see how you can just end up going through that loop infinite, infinitely basically and I think that's where a lot of people come from uh, have problems when they're starting to make things so Long story short is it's quite important to, for you to just get an idea as to what you what constraints you want to define earlier on. Um, they are not bad things to define uh, to have a good idea as to what you're trying to achieve earlier on in the project. So the next thing I defined was the cruise speed that I wanted. Um, of course, I did have a transition speed as well, and that was I think I defined that something like around 15 meters per second it still must have been some it still must have been something that I should be able to to control F fairly it should be slow enough that I can control it into into V12 into forward flight mode um, with an RT stick and I think I set the cruise speed to be ar around it was something like 25 meters per second um, this one is designed for around 30 meters per second because it's a bit heavier sounds fast I know it, it is fast the weight I started off, the weight got a bit out of control because I started off with like 750 grams and then it just, you know, when you start off these things you don't really know how realistic your goals are um, as, as you're going forward a little bit. But the problem was I also defined a constraint on the aircraft's size and I said I wanted it to be 600 millimeters and trying to get something 600 millimeters um, with the materials that I have access to within my budget um, I couldn't I couldn't do that this plane is 1.4 kilograms and I think the VTOL version is something like 1.5 kilograms or something like that is it's ridiculous last thing is the um, flight time flight time is very important for your um, aircraft projects 
I set a flight time at something like five minutes or something like that and it wasn't very particularly important for me to have a long flight time I just need the aircraft to literally just get up in the air do a few loops and come back down and that's it so last thing is um, why does the aircraft look the way it does um, how did I come up with this design so as I mentioned before I initially set out to make a VTOL aircraft and the reason why it's sort of so fat in the middle is because there's got this massive ducted fan assembly rotating assembly it looks like it like rotates like like this and like that and um, obviously this this does not have a rotated ducted assembly but I didn't I didn't want to change the design because I'm sort of using using this to de-risk the aerodynamic analysis that I did for this um, so I wanted to use back as many components as I possibly could the problem is I started printing a lot of parts with two wall counts and, and you know very heavy components um, and that's why the weight escalated pretty quickly and so I ended up with like a lot of duplicate parts even even the ducted fans were initially sized for a 750 gram aircraft so obviously one of these ducted fans would have been good enough if the aircraft was 750 grams but it was not <laughs> so so I was like oh gosh what am I going to do with all these parts so so that's where this aircraft was born from he was basically born from scrap parts from the VTOL version but this brings me to like a very important point is that when you when you're making things uh, especially for say production vision a lot of what you're going to be doing is you're going to have a lot of build visions or a lot of uh, sort of development visions like I don't think it, when Airbus gets a, designs an airplane I mean they might do it now but like in the earlier days when they were now starting off they didn't just like make an airplane the first time and got it right um, and then said oh well, look we've made an airplane and then they give it to the customer I guarantee you that did not happen they probably had as for example another good example is with Elon Musk with um, like his SN8s and SN9s and all of these different de he had development versions of his vehicles and the reason for that is because you're using each one of those vehicles to de-risk the design the design in itself stands alone and then at the end of the day you're just de doing things and testing things to de-risk that design a good example is these wing locks I did not have confidence in these wing locks at all and when I actually got it up in, into flight at least to some extent um, those wing locks kept the, kept the wings in really well because um, I put a marker basically on, on them to see if they shifted during if they would shift during the um, during taxiing and they did not but sometimes you may, you won't always get it right uh, the first time so don't feel bad if you try to make something and you've only you've not and things have just not worked if if you've reached a, a blocking point and you know things are just not going the way you'd want it to start from scratch start again from a blank sheet of paper and that's what happened with this but luckily enough I didn't really have to start again from scratch uh, but I did decide to just take a bit of a detour and now we're we're basically now back to this because I know I know this flies and this is ready so that's it for this video I don't think I have anything else to talk about <laughs> um, I will the next video will probably be um, seems like a good logical way to take it would be as I mentioned before you you started from a blank sheet of paper you've drawn out your design you've then sketched it up a little bit in three dimensions just to see what it looks like and you're happy with what roughly what you'd expect it to look like and then the next logical step would be to take it into X flyer and you're gonna start drawing out um, your components and figuring out your airfoil profiles and that sort of thing so the next video will probably be um, along the lines of that so I hope this video was helpful to you and you learned something from it if you're still here uh, I appreciate that some of the later videos will probably be a bit more helpful uh, from a technical standpoint uh, but at least in this video I just wanted to show you what it is I was trying to do and why it is I was trying to do it so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next videos